Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Did you know that during the past 50 years, we have received from all over the world countless letters from thousands of thankful and grateful mothers? From mothers who have reared their children on Horlicks, one of the world's best-known infant foods. This remarkable tribute to a remarkable product bears out the experience of many child-feeding authorities that Horlicks is a marvelous food for infants. Rich in calcium, phosphorus, and vitamins, Horlicks aids in the proper development of tooth and bone structure, helps build sturdy, strong bodies. Even more important, Horlicks is especially easy to digest. It can safely be handled by even the tiniest and most delicate stomach. Every modern mother should become acquainted with this famous malted milk, which can be bought today at any drugstore. Get some from your favorite druggist. Remember, Horlicks is equally fine for the nursing mother as for the infant. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. When Squire Skimp gave Snake Hogan the money with which to buy the Jotham Down store from Abner... He presumed that Abner would invest the $2,000 he received in stock in his silver mine. But Abner has been doggedly hanging on to the cash. As we left the old fellows yesterday, Squire Skimp and Snake Hogan had just forced Abner into an automobile and driven off with him in what looked like a last-minute strong-arm attempt to recover the $2,000 by force. As we look in on Pine Ridge today... It is early morning, and we find Lum over at his home, evidently practicing voice lessons. At least, we think that's what it is. Listen. Do, re, mi, fo, so, la, ti, do. Re, mi, fo, so, la, ti, do. Many brave hearts are asleep in the deep. So beware. Sleep in the deep, so beware, beware, <clears throat> beware, <clears throat> dead flame, <clears throat> beware. Just a minute, I'm a dead blank my telephone out of wreck at that time, so. Hello, I, hello. Yes, Mom, this is him. Why, no, I ain't saw him. He never. Well, whereabouts is he at? Oh. Well, uh, when, when did you see him last? Uh-huh. Well, I... Second, I've seen him since then, and he was with Squire Skimp and Snake Hogan late just the evening. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, he drove off in the car with them. Well, I can't understand it neither. Don't reckon something... Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, Elizabeth. Somebody at the door. Hello? Or, I mean, uh, come in. Come in. Well, good morning, dear. Hey, Lum, Elizabeth Peabody just called me a while ago and said that Abner didn't show up. Yeah, I know. I'm talking to her here on the phone right now. Oh, excuse me. Go ahead. Well, Elizabeth, Dick Huddleston just come in, and we'll see if we can't find Let me talk to her a minute there, Lum. Yeah. Just a minute. Dick wants to talk to you. Hello? Uh, Elizabeth? Well, I just wanted to tell you not to worry. We'll do everything we can to locate him. Uh, I called Squire Skimp to meet me over here at Lum. Well, Squire and Snake uh, were with him the last time I saw him yesterday evening. Yeah, he may have some idea where he is. Well, don't worry now. Yeah, he might find out he just spent the night at one of the neighbors. All right, Elizabeth. Now, we'll call you if we hear anything. Goodbye. Granny, what do you think of that? Well, I don't know. After all the threat that Snake Hogan was making, I'm a little uneasy now. Have you saw Snake? No, I tried to get him on the phone over at his house, and his wife said he wasn't there. Well, maybe he's over to his store. Had you forgot about him owning the Jotham Down store? No, I just came by there, and it's closed up. Well, I do know. The uh, squire said he'd be over here in a few minutes, so maybe he knows something about where he is. You think maybe Squire and Snake had something to do with him being gone, huh? Well, it looks awful suspicious to me. 
You know how they forced him in that car yesterday afternoon and drove off. Yeah. And he told us that they'd been threatening him if they didn't give that $2,000 back. Well, they can't make him give that money back. It was a fair and square deal. Snake offered Abner $2,000 for the store and Abner taking him up on it. Well, hey, they thought that Abner would turn right around and invest the money in the silver mine. And he fooled them. <laughs> Squire just trying to get that money back. I can't understand that neither. Good a thing is that mining stock is. I don't see why Squire would be so anxious to sell it. Well, that's not hard for me to figure out. No. I guess he just thinks so much of Abner he's going to force him to get rich where he wants to or not. Well, Lom, I don't like to discourage you in that silver mine. I know you're sincere in your belief that it's going to make everybody rich. But I wouldn't give you a nickel for the whole business. Well, the trouble is you just ain't had Squire explain it to you like he did to me. If you could just hear him tell about how that silver's down the mine in great big chunks, chunks big as a stump, he says, millions of dollars worth of it. Yeah, but now, you know, um, Squire doesn't always stick to the truth. You ought to know that by now. Oh, he uh, exaggerates some, but on this mining deal, I can tell by talking to him, he's doing this for the good of the community. Well, I don't like to talk about Squire to his back, but he's one man in this town that I haven't got a better use for. He'll do anything to pick up a few dollars. Never made an honest dollar in his life that I know of. Well, I don't know if I'd go for first to say that, Dave. But he's one of the best salesmen I ever saw. I'll say that. He can sell anything. Yeah, yeah he's a smooth talker, all right. And if he'd concentrated that ability or talent along a legitimate line, why, he'd have been a big success. Yeah. <laughs> like that story they tell on him when he was selling those electric uh, milking machines around there. <laughs> he talked old Uncle Henry Lunsford into buying one. <laughs> he never had but one cow. <laughs> and then he took the cow in as down payment on the machine. <laughs> yeah, I heard about it. Yeah. It's very odd he's Uncle Henry buying one of them things when he ain't even got electricity on his place. And that's just what's the matter now, too. Squires always scanned everybody in these trades that he makes. And when Abner got the best of him when he sold the store, well, he just don't know what to think. Well, Abner never sold the store to Squire. Snake Hogan's the one that bought it. If anybody got a skin in his snake. Well, there's no doubt in my mind now, Lum, but what Squire put up the money for Snake to buy the store with. There wasn't anything to that store they was telling about Snake falling heir to some money. There weren't? No, I asked his wife about it when I was talking to her on the phone a while ago, and she said she hadn't heard a thing about it. Well, I do know. Reckon how that story got started then. Why, anybody could see through that. Squire didn't want Abner to know that he was buying it because... He wanted to sell Abner that stock in the silver mine and get the money back. His plan was to have the store and the money both before he got through with the deal. But it didn't work. Well, you don't think that Squire would hurt Abner anyway trying to get that money back, do you? Well, no, I'm not as worried about Squire as I am Snake Hogan. Squire's too smart, I believe, to do anything that might get him into trouble. If anything happened to Abner, well, Squire more than likely got Snake to do it for him. Well, sir, I thought that looked kind of funny yesterday, them forcing Abner to get in that car with him. But I don't know what they could have did to him. Well, there's lots of things that could have happened. They might be holding him someplace till he gives the money back, or they might try to force him to give it back and accidentally hurt him some way. Well, Granny, you ever get me worried about this sure enough now. Well, it's something to be worried about, Mom. It's not like Abner to be staying out all night for no reason. He might have tried to put up a fight, and you know he's no match for a fellow like Snake. Why, of course not, the big bully. Very odd is him jumping on a little feller like Abner. He ought to be took out and horse whooped, run out of town with tar and feathers. Well, now, of course, we don't know for sure that he's done it. Yes, he yeah. has. I see through the whole thing now. Dad, blame him. And if Squire Skimp put him up to it, he's just as guilty as Snake is. Granny, they got me to deal with. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Not so loud, Lum. It's from the door. It must be squatting. Yeah, if it's him, I'm going to jump on him and give him a whooping. Now, don't start anything now. Just let me talk to him. Tell him to come in. Yeah. Uh, come in. Come in. Well, good morning, Squire. Yeah, howdy, Squire. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Come in and sit down, Squire. Here, take this rock. Here, yes, here. Yes, thank you, Lum. Uh, Dick, what have you got on your mind that's so important you'd call a man over here this time of the morning? Well, I expect you've got a pretty good idea, Squire. No, not unless you change your mind, want to buy some stock in our silver mine. No, it's about Abner, Squire. About Abner? Yeah. Yeah, his wife called up a while ago and said that he didn't show up at home all night. Well, I do declare. And we thought maybe that you might be able to help us locate him. Well, I'll be glad to do anything I can to help me, you know that. 
Uh, he never come in all night, huh? No, and the last time anybody saw him was yesterday evening when you and the Snake Hawkins forced him to get in that automobile with you and drive off with him. Yeah, now, there's no use to beat around a bush, squire. Lama and I have decided that you and Snake Hogan are responsible for Abner's disappearance, and now we want to know where he is. Yeah, and we don't want no stalling around, either. Why, well, me and I'm astonished that you'd think that I know anything about this. Why, if I knew where Abner was, I'd go get him in a minute. I didn't even know he was missing until just now. I'll be glad to help do anything I can, but now, I haven't any more idea where he is than you fellas have. Well, where did you and Snake take him to yesterday evening? Well, well, we just uh, drove down the road a ways there, long so we could uh, talk more privately with him. But when did you see him last? Why, we let him out of the car just a few minutes after we left the store there. Now, now, just be sure you're telling the story straight, Squire. Because I'm going to get the sheriff out here on this case, and you're liable to get yourself in some serious trouble. Yeah. Well, that's all I know about it, man. All right, we'll call up the sheriff then, see if he can refresh your memory in him. Well, yes, call him out. I'll help try to locate him, sure. And I think while he's out here, it might be a good idea to have him investigate that silver mining stock you've been selling. I guess you've heard of such a thing as a blue sky, law, Squire. Well, now, just a minute now, man. Let me see now. If I remember correctly, after we left you fellas yesterday, Snake got pretty rough with Abner, and uh, I stopped the car, and Abner broke loose from Snake and jumped out of the car and run. I just suppose that he'd stuck out for home. You mean he'd taken out down the road for home? Well, no, he didn't, Lum. He headed up through the mountains there, but I figured he'd circle around head for home directly. We hollered at him, tried to stop him, but he wouldn't pay any attention to us. Now, it might be that he got over there in those mountains and... Uh, wait a minute. What you fixing to do there, Dick? Hello? Uh, give me the sheriff's office in the county seat, please, now. Well, uh, now, don't do that, Dick. Now, that won't be necessary at all, now. You're going to stay right here till the sheriff gets there, too, Squire. We'll find out whether you're telling the truth or not. Dick evidently feels that Squire Skint is the clue to Abner's disappearance. Don't forget these hot summer days that Horlicks makes a mighty fine cooling drink. As refreshing as anything else you've ever tried. Economical, too, because all you have to do to make a cool, delicious glass of Horlicks is to mix thoroughly some Horlicks powder with cold water. Horlicks powder, you see, already contains a full supply of rich, full cream milk. There's no need to add any further milk unless you want to. One other thing, Horlicks is so remarkably easy to digest that it does not spoil the appetite. So by all means, get a package of Horlicks from your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. And it's a good idea to keep a pitcher of Horlicks in the refrigerator, ready for immediate use. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all goodbye and...